again, we're thankful for those who are tuning in, joining us. Last I checked, there's something like five different states. Florida, Missouri, Texas, and now Tennessee. Actually, a couple of folks in Tennessee. Old friends I haven't seen in a lot of years. Welcome you this morning. As I said, I have a little bit of a surprise. At least it was for me and one I needed. Uh, you know, if Elijah can get discouraged, uh, that leaves room for any preacher to get discouraged. I've been going through my downs just recently, questioning what the Lord's purpose is, call on my life, uh, pastoring Believers Fellowship as we are again. And in walks a dear friend, an old uh, partner of mine in ministry. Actually, I remember him coming to the Lord and sharing his first testimony, or actually it was his first sermon, really. He got up and introduced himself. He said, now I ain't like Brother Wes or really anybody else. I'm just an old ragu preacher. And uh, he continued in his Dago style. And from that moment on, God began to use him in a great way. It was one of the toughest times of my life when the Lord began to show me that uh, he was going to ship him out. I was going to lose him. Uh, not as a friend, as a brother, but as someone, uh, as a part of our fellowship. And there was a pastor was in trouble, needed help with his church. And so I sent one of my elders along with uh, Brother Glenn. And they, they went down and helped carry their church through a difficult time. And he went on to continue to minister with our brother as we helped them launch their church. I knew it was God's will, but I wasn't comfortable with it. I wasn't happy with it. That can happen. Sometimes God, God will ask you to do some difficult things. And uh, what a blessing that he came walking in unexpected this morning. So I've asked him. He wasn't prepared, but he graciously said he would just come introduce himself and share a word of encouragement with you. Those of you listening, some of you will recognize the face. This is Brother Glenn Bears. But Glenn, it's all yours. All right. Take it away. Thank you, Brother Wes. Yeah, I didn't expect to share. I was just coming to receive. And uh, But uh, hello to everyone out there who's uh, watching via Facebook. And uh, Brother Wes is right. I, I got saved at Believer's Fellowship in 1993. Wow. So that was, what, tw almost 26 years ago. It was right before my 30th birthday. So uh, I guess if those that could do math figure, <clears throat> I'm almost 56 now. And... Um, you know, Brother Wes, is, you've never been far from my heart. Thank you, brother. Uh, even through these years of different things that I've uh, been involved in in ministry, and I often reflect on the, the foundation that was laid in my life at Believer's Fellowship because I, I, I just cannot express what that has meant to me. That uh, I often tell people that being under Brother Wes's ministry had, you know, put me in a graduate class. I mean, I went straight to the deep word, as those of you can also testify that are, that are watching and, and, and know uh, Brother West and his ministry over these years. And I've just been uh, just so grateful and uh, just uh, reflect on those times. And I remember so many of the things that I learned and so many of the messages and, and so many of the times. Uh, I remember one time that I, I often share when I go places because uh, people are shocked at, uh, at uh, just some of the testimony that I talk about with Believers Fellowship. But Brother West, you remember the time that the spirit was moving so much in the morning church that you sent the deacons out for chicken uh, and we went straight into the evening chicken service. Sunday. Yeah, chicken Sunday. Chicken Sunday. <laughs> I remember that because, you know, when some people are looking at their watch after about an hour, I said, man, we used to go to, when I first got saved, I mean, I just jumped in. Right. And we would go, I would drive all the way from Mira, from Violet, Louisiana. Yeah. It was like 30, 35, 40 minute drive one way through New Orleans. And I did that on Sundays, Sunday night, Wednesday, mm -hmm. did it all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and didn't want to leave. And so, and, and that was just imparted into me very early. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's just amazing what that did for me at that time. Uh, it was funny because when my wife got saved before me and she was driving out and my son was only, I mean, he was in arms. He was only two years old when she started going to Believers Fellowship. 
And I wasn't going to church. I wouldn't do it. I didn't care. I said, you can go. I'm not going. You know, that's just how I was. I was, uh, I was agnostic. I mean, I knew there was a God, but I didn't know who he was. And she would come and try to tell me about this great church that she started going to. And I, yeah, okay. And then I remember calling my mother-in-law saying, it's one o'clock. Who goes to church for two hours? This is ridiculous because I didn't attend. I mean, we called ourselves Catholic growing up, but, you know, we didn't attend. I didn't ever until mass in my life. Other than, you know, didn't do any of that. Just wrote it down like being, you know, somebody. It was like part of my heritage, you know. So we didn't go. But I remember getting frustrated. And then my wife just shaking her head, you know, because every time I wasn't working, I was trying to be at the church. And that's what it meant to me. And. Uh, you know, Brother West, you were singing, and, and I've been through my wilderness journeys myself and been around that mountain and all of those things. And uh, But something that you just spoke that really spoke to me, because this is what the Lord's been dealing with me, is that he loved me and he loves Amen. me anyway. Amen. It's so unconditional. And, but he is jealous for my love. He's jealous for anything that would ever take the place of him and He's going to do what he has to do to drink, bring you back. And I've just been blessed and fortunate that I didn't have to quite go into the pig pen, that I've been able to come running back every time, and every time I find him with open arms. And Amen. it really is a reflection of what I learned. Just in, 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 in the, the motto of the church back then was, come hear Jesus preached. You know, and that's exactly what it was. There was a picture of Jesus that was shown to me every week. And I tell you, I, I didn't know what a bell or a pomegranate, I didn't know any of that <laughs> stuff was. But all I knew is it always pointed towards Jesus. And that just gave me such a hunger for the word. It really did. It, it, it just gave me such a hunger to see. And my wife and I would just go home just shaking out, amazed. We'd put the tape in and listen to it again on the way home. And it was just always amazing how it just always went back to the cross, bro. Right. And, and that was the foundation that was laid. And I know those that are watching by Facebook can testify to that. And uh, I'm just so glad I'm here today, brother. And uh, I love you. And yeah, I, I just can't express how much I appreciate what it's meant to me over these years uh, of what you sowed into my life mm -hmm. back then. So I just want to thank you again. Amen. I don't want to take out everybody's coming to see, hear you. So, <laughs> here we go. so there you go, brother. God bless thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. All right. Amen. Amen. And I can say likewise. I mean, this may sound like an exaggeration, but it's not. If Billy Graham himself came back from dead walking the door, it wouldn't have been any more encouraging than to see Brother Glenn. I've always loved this brother. His simple, humble way of approaching ministry. And what he did tell you, because that's how humble he is, is that uh, as he went on to associate pastor in a church uh, out there in uh, St. Bernard, from there the Lord took him to Baton Rouge where he ministered with one of the great ministries uh, of all time really in this area with Dr. Malelli, a very large church. He was associate pastor there. Uh, actually had opportunity, could have pastored there. But the Lord kept kind of moving him around. And during that time, actually, actually, when he was with us, he hooked up with one of the great missions that we supported in Haiti under Sister Dula Trahan. And I don't know how many times you've been down there. Oh, more than I could count. Yeah, more than you could count. And had a heart for those people. At least 100. <laughs> 100 <laughs> times years. to Haiti. And not an easy place to go. I mean, the part of the island where she was at, a lot of witchcraft and voodoo going on there that they had to battle. And uh, what an honor to have you here, brother.